provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. to another edition of Discover Tinley for this month. Uh, my name is Ron Centani. I'll be your host tonight. And uh, as always, the program is to highlight the people and organizations in Tinley Park that make this town a great place in which to live. And as we all know, Tinley Park is a great place in which to live. As usual, our program is brought to you through the volunteer efforts of the Community Resources Commission and also our high school volunteers who are behind the cameras and doing all kinds of other work behind that too. So we're very fortunate to have a lot of volunteer efforts on this program every, every month. Uh, this month, uh, can you believe uh, December is almost coming, Christmas is coming, uh, Santa's coming next month, uh, if you can believe all that. It seems like we just had summer uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, December uh, 6th is the tree lighting ceremony over at the Oak Park train station. And the market will be open, the Christmas market will be open December 6th through 8th. And Santa arrives on December 7th. So uh, look for Santa coming on the 7th and he'll be there on the 8th and uh, bring the kids and have all kinds of good stuff for the, the kids to see for Santa's arrival. So Christmas is coming sooner than we want sometimes. Well, our program tonight is kind of interesting. We've got two extremes of guests tonight. One who's been around Timley Park for quite a long time and done a lot of service in town. And another young man who's just starting his volunteer service in town. Our uh, first guest uh, has, has been a, almost, a, almost a lifelong resident of Timley Park. He's been around a long time. Uh, he's done a lot of things in town here, and we're going to talk about him. Our first guest is Charlie Smith. Charlie, welcome it, to Discover it's Timley. It's great to be here, be part of the Human Resource Commission, yeah. Discover Timley. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wow. And that, uh, lifetime, almost a lifelong resident of Timley. Yes. What's, what are some memories of Tinley Park that you oh, have to go back uh, on? They were all great, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we just had Oak Park Avenue. Harlem Avenue was gravel road, oh. you know, and that just gives you a little reference of what it is now. Yeah. Uh, it was a smaller community. Uh, we used to have free movies on Friday nights on the side of the elevator. And that was that's over by where the train station is yeah, now. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, the first train the first station. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it was a, you'd go uptown, uh, there was Cabot Drug, and it had a soda counter and so forth, and you'd see people like Tony Bettenhausen, who this community's known <laughs> for. He'd, he'd come in there when he wasn't uh -huh. racing. And uh, it was just a, a great community. It had tremendous school systems. Uh, I was a graduate of Central Junior High, and then I'd, I went to Bremen High School. That was the only Tinley Park wasn't school. open then. No, oh, no, wow. no. This is going back to going the... Back. <laughs> Yeah, the wagon days. No, no. You know, that's what we took to school. <laughs> Not really. But anyway, it was a great community. Uh, I still have many friends that, uh, you know, I grew up with and so forth and involved. Uh, and um, it was friendly. It, if you go uptown, which is Oak Park Avenue, yeah. we call it uptown. I lived in Parkside. And uh, you, you'd take time to, to go up and just buy milk or whatever because everybody knew each other. So you'd always get in conversations with people at the National and the Jewel and that type of thing. So it was a great community. Uh, the population was uh, around 10,000 people at that time. And then the growth just took off, you know. So it's changed. There's been a lot of progress. But uh, thanks to uh, the government, the village of Tinley Park, it's a great planned community, and it's been given several awards throughout the years, and especially a great place to raise a family. Wow. Well, I thought, speaking about the governor awards, we uh, uh, understand you recently got an award from the village, and our mayor, Mayor Ed, is here to uh, talk about the award the village board recently gave you. Uh, mayor Ed, uh, 
What 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 did you get for uh, for Charlie here? First of all, thank you, Ron, for uh, allowing me to be a part of this this evening with you. Uh, Charlie is a unique individual, and I moved in Tinley Park in 1970, and Charlie was one of the first people I met in Tinley Park, and you know his community service has certainly uh, been a, is an example for others to follow. Uh, the village felt very strongly about. Charlie and what he has contributed to this community and he mentioned uh, earlier about an award about being a great place to w raise a family and quite frankly Charlie is a uh, kind of a, one of those building blocks to make Tinley Park a family place. I'd like to just read portions of this proclamation because it's an opportunity to see what an individual can do in a community and how he has changed the community to a very very positive aspect. Whereas Charlie Smith a lifelong resident of Tinley Park, and one of very special people that has made this village the family-oriented, unselfish, concerned community for which it is known, and where his reputation has consistently reflected those values. In the mid-1950s until today, Charlie exemplified those extraordinary human traits as an athlete, a go-to person among his young peers at Central Junior High, where he was Superintendent Walter Ferrick, where he, Superintendent Walter Ferrick recognized Charlie for his unselfish leadership. He continued at Bremen High School with his activities and again, exemplify the concept, no student left behind before it was popular. Moving down here a little bit, whereas in 1989, the Community Service Foundation was formed by Charlie to, submit, to supplement funding and state, from state and federal programs. And Charlie has been a member of that board for many, many years until he's retired. Whereas, while at that time, Charlie became chairperson and president of the Illinois Association of Rehabilitation Facilities, chairman of the Executive Council of the Association of Handicapped Citizens of Illinois, and a member of the Advocate Christ Hospital Governing Board, while continuing to actively support his own community of Tinley Park as founder of the Tinley Park JCs, former president of the Tinley Park Chamber of Commerce, and chairman of the Tinley Park Civil Service Commission, and also chairman of the Human Resources Commission back a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Charlie received the Outstanding Business Person Award from the Tinley Park Chamber of Commerce, Director's Award from the Illinois Department of Developmentally and Disabled, and a recipient, recipient of the United Way Ambassador Program. Whereas he and his family have remained active in the support of Tinley Park, he stead, his steadfast inspiration has been his loving mother, Louise, who currently just passed her 100th anniversary. Charlie is recognized for his 40 years as Executive Director of the Southwest Community Services in November of 2011, and now is recognized for his departure from the Southwest Community Service in Ju June 20, 2013, marks a lifetime and legacy of service to the people of Tinley Park. And again, through the years, Charlie has exemplified what it means to give back to a community. He saw a need. He worked with people that many people, other people would turn their backs on, the disabled, the, the folks who are challenged mentally, physically. And he went ahead and said, we need, an, we need these people. We need something for them. And he stepped forward to do that. And that's what makes Charlie Smith literally a Tinley Park person to remember for well, many, many, many long time. what was the name time. of the award you gave him? The, which one? Humanitarian. Uh, Humanitarian of the Year Award. Yeah. Yeah. And that certainly exemplifies that. Now, in the same breath, I've gone fishing with Charlie, yeah, and he can't yeah, fish worth a damn. We, we, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> I've got a few stories on you. Oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't go with a show. It'll but serious show, we could probably It'll do It'll come out in the next but campaign. But seriously, oh, yeah. Charlie is an example for young people to follow. Wow. And uh, hopefully well, his inspiration will filter down. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Mayor. And... Uh, uh, you read what he read everything well that I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but Ed uh, was part of the Human Resource Commission. I think when he came in to our community, he was looking to volunteer right away, and he became one of the founding members of the Human Resource Commission, as, as well as your, your uh, Rita mm -hmm. and a couple other people. And, and Ron, you you came into the commission quite early on too, um, and. I'm telling you, it, it, uh, you talk about a village, you know, makes a child. Uh, this village made our agency, and it serves people with mental retardation. Yeah, let's it's talk about the agency that, uh, that you got there. It's called the Southwest Community Services. Yes. What is it for? What is the function? What it, was it set up to do? Yeah, it started out in 71, 
uh, in a very small setting. We served about 46 people then. And uh, we had volunteers. Uh, actually, they were uh, affiliated with the Mennonite Church. And they have VS service, which stands for volunteer service. They came from all over the United States and some people from Germany as well as uh, Japan. And they came and, and served the people that we served. And uh, the, primarily the staff was made up of these volunteers. And there was a need. Uh, you know, the, the federal government was starting to look at community services in the community for people with mental retardation. As Tinley Park opened uh, to that type of disability with Howe Developmental Center and Tinley Park Mental Health Center. And what we would do is we would serve the people in the community of Tinley and 38 other communities, as well as some of the people who resided at Howe Developmental Center. And it just grew because it's in the community that people can be served and integrated into the community then isolated into a large institution. Now what kind of things would, they, would you do there? What, what, what was we, the... we were a traditional workshop where okay. we got uh, different subcontracts, we call them, okay. uh, from companies and local companies, Panduit, uh, uh, ITW, which is you know down Harlem here, and mm -hmm. and other other places. I shouldn't start because I should yeah, you, recognize yeah, right, everybody. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the mayor taught me that at <laughs> one time, you know, in speaking. Um, and and we get the work in, and the people identify with working and getting paid for it through the Department of Labor Standards, and uh, payday is a, a real good day, and, and that gets them into the community and with their neighbors who also receive paid checks and so forth, and as they improve, we place them in the community. Oh. Couple, our beginning years, we, we placed about 46% of our people who came into the program back in the community part-time, some full-time jobs. Wow. So you kind of made these people feel more like a part of the community. They contributed, they get a paycheck, they felt like they were really yeah. performing and doing something constructive than just sitting at home and kind of waiting oh, things out. Yeah, we, we like to use the dignity word, yeah, you know. Yeah. It gives them dignity, there's a little risk with that, but uh, the dignity that they received getting a paycheck. And I think when you become more normal, mm -hmm. you know, that the disability begins to uh, diminish quite a bit. And so if, if you know, uh, they've got the same number of bones that we have, you know, and the two eyes and, and those types of things, and when they, uh, people have jobs like you and I, mm -hmm. it's very normalization uh, yeah. type of thing, and uh, it diminishes the disability, sure. you know. So How that's many people what would you say you've served over the years, what you, any guesstimates? Well, we uh, we're told at the presentation at least twelve thousand oh people. <laughs> different different people, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here in Tinley, we we serve about two hundred at our location on Prosperi, which is by the the theater, okay. and uh, th they are people some from Howe, but then Howe has closed and. We uh, have another agency that provides residential programs. So the people from Howe went to the community residential programs, but they also came to uh, Southwest Community Services. Okay. So uh, we still provide a lot of those type of services. Those types of services are changing in that we want to get more in the community. Sure. And we have residential settings uh, for eight people, single family homes, and uh, uh, they live in the community. It's wow. a lot better than an institution of 300 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's been our success, residential as well as job placement. There's one other thing I think we need to mention Real about quickly. Charlie, and we kind of went over it quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two things. There's a facility in town called Bremen Manor mm -hmm. on Oak Park Avenue right next to the Village Hall. Mm -hmm. At a time, folks were looking to build that. Other communities said no. Charlie Smith brought that to our community yeah. and explained the situation it made a difference. Also, he's on a governing board of Advocate Hospital, mm -hmm. which, can, how many hospitals, Charlie, involved Thirteen. There? Thirteen different hospitals. So again, that's quite a contribution, not only to the area here, but statewide and wow. beyond, that, beyond that. So again, Charlie's that example. Well, well uh, while, I, I, while I, he's I, saying this, yeah, okay. uh, it's because of the village of Tinley Park, we actually got the location that we're at, mm. uh, donated because of the efforts of the village of Tinley Park 
keynoted and had a, and led by Ed Sabraki. Wow. Well, that's fantastic. What you guys, uh, what you've provided to the village and the people here is just outstanding. And also your volunteer work with the JCs and civic committees, uh, Charlie Smith, is a humanitarian of the year. So yeah. you're here. Congratulations. Raised you, here. Raised here, too. Yeah, that's what Thanks uh, for all you it. do, and uh, thanks for coming to Discover Tinley. Great. And keep up the great work. Well, thanks for inviting me back to the Human Resource Commission oh, yeah. and Discover Tinley. <laughs> Charlie Smith, uh, along with Mayor Ed, uh, one of the uh, top volunteers in Tinley Park and doing a lot of good over many, many years. The holiday season is a wonderful time in Tinley Park, so mark your calendar for December 6th, 7th, and 8th. All the festivities kick off at 5.30 at Zabraki Plaza at the Oak Park train station with the official tree lighting at 6 p.m. The Christmas market opens right after the lighting. This year's holiday market will have lots of vendors, entertainment, and tasty food. The market will be open from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday, noon to 6 on Saturday, and f noon to 5 on Sunday. This is the perfect spot to find that just right gift for the holidays. On Saturday, Santa and Mrs. Claus will arrive at noon and be available for pictures in his six. A 5x7 picture of your group with Santa is available free of charge and parents are encouraged to bring their own camera for additional pictures. You can go on a horse-drawn carriage ride through Old Town Tinley, shop the market, or watch videos at the Landmark Museum. Sunday, all of the same activities are continued from noon to 5 when Santa needs to leave for the Parade of Lights. Additional information is available at the village website, tinleypark.org. That was kind of interesting seeing Charlie Smith, a longtime volunteer and uh, service provider in Tinley Park, uh, been around a long time, giving of himself and his uh, family to service of Tinley Park and to people. Uh, next guest is a newcomer to the volunteer service area. It's somebody who's just starting out, a uh, pretty young, uh, young man, a sophomore at Lincoln Way North High School. Uh, Jacob Jung. Jacob, welcome to Discover Tinley. Hi, thanks very much for having me. And his father, Tim Jung. Thank you for having us. We got both of you here, right? Yep. Wow. Uh, Lincoln Way North High School. You're what year right now? You're sophomore. Sophomore over there. Uh, you're working on your Eagle Project, I understand now, right? Yes, I am. What is your Eagle Project this year going to be? Or what has it been so far? It has been collecting toiletries and snack items for, to send to Father Chris Doring in at Camp Clark, Afghanistan. Okay, wow. Okay, way over in Afghanistan. Huh? Yep. Father, Dor now uh, give me some background. How did you find out about this, or how did this even come to uh, your attention? Why did you even think about doing this kind of project? Well, Father Chris has used to go, used to be a priest at our at our church, yeah, church Saint George. Saint George. So he sometimes writes an article for the bulletin, and there was one article that was titled, "I haven't used toilet paper in months." So. And it was based off of a conversation he had overheard about how they had so little of it over in Afghanistan that people haven't used toilet paper for months. They had to use wipes and, well. And he, and he was serving over in it. Yeah, he's a, uh, a priest, but he joined the military, right? And yes. And is serving, actually serving as a military priest over in Afghanistan. Yes, he is. And what happened after you saw the article? Um, well... My mom is usually in contact, t <clears throat> kept in contact with him a lot, mm -hmm. as he did with a lot of prisoners. So I asked him if I could do anything to help. I, I asked for a list if I could collect items and to do for my Eagle Project. And then he responded, and there was it was a pretty big list with an emph em <clears throat> emphasis on men's items and toiletries. Like, for instance, deodorant. <laughs> deodorant gets pretty, pretty warm over there in Afghanistan. Huh? Yep. Okay. And really, it after that, we got the list and we put stuff together, and things just went up from there. Wow. Okay. Now, you, when, how, what kind of stuff did you get together, and how did you even assemble all these things or gather all this stuff? Um, it had to do a lot with the Great American Bagel, um, Walgreens, St. George Church, and they were really important parts of collecting all the items. We got boxes of wipes, boxes of Pringles, the, and not to mention the um, massive, what was it? Oh yeah, the massive candies. Candies. Like those Halloween pa 
boxes. Oh, okay. We got one of those. Big box of Halloween, like that kind of candy, okay. And the soap from 1990-something, or 1992. Okay. We had a lot of those. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, and a lot of it came from people who knew Father Chris. The reason it went off so well is because so many people actually knew him, and it wasn't just for some for some soldiers. They knew who it was going to and who it was going to be distributing it. Okay. So a lot of like parishioners that heard yes. about it and do you kind of advertise it and saying, hey, I'm collecting stuff for Father Chris? Yeah, we had um, articles in the bulletin and it was mentioned before church during the announcements. So. Okay. Now when did you start this? How long ago did you start this? Um, about three months ago. We started, oh. we started in July. Okay. And just finally sent out the last packages this morning. How much did you send out? Over nine that over one hundred and six boxes. Like how how big would a box be? Um about twelve by twelve by fifteen, I believe. Okay. And the boxes did vary in range. We collected over we've we've collected and sent over nine thousand Two hundred and seventeen items. Wow! Holy cow! That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, and this it is going over there, the troops. And the, you know how many troops are over there in Afghanistan getting this? About four hundred. About four hundred. Oh wow! And we we didn't know how much support we would get for it, mm -hmm. so our original we hoped to get at least four hundred items, so everyone there would get something. So four hundred, and you got nine thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, okay. And the biggest contributors were places like Walgreens and who else contributed to? Um, the Great American Bagel. Did they send bagels over there? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a lot of the... Um, the customers, customers from Great American Bagel. We received oh. a lot from Fox College. Each month they choose a charity uh -huh. to provide to and they pick Jacobs for a month. Oh. So we received... 13 paper boxes full of items just from Fox College. Oh my. Wow, and they're not even right here. They're they're what in Oaklawn or something like that. Or where they uh, where they located? Mm -hmm. They have a couple different camp oh, campuses, okay. but uh, Pat Conroy from St. George was the person who headed that up and put in Jake's name so he could get the be the charity that was chosen for the month. Wow. Yeah. You got some pretty good support from all kinds of people around here, didn't oh, you? Oh yeah. Now, how about shipping that out? How did you get it all shipped out? How did that work? It had a lot to do with the village. Okay. They sent 25 of our boxes. Oh. Um, we sent 21 or 22 boxes with donations from the prisoners and others. And then we, UTI Freight Forward, volunteered to send 440 pounds of items, which turned out to be 36 boxes. And then there was, within the last couple of weeks or so, um, my mom was at a Sox game with an old, with an old, with. That's too bad. No, no, I'm, yeah. not, I'm a Cub fan, I'm sorry, no. But that was good, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, it was a Sox game and she uh, met somebody there? She was with an old friend who kind of, who got us the UTI Fate Forward. Uh -huh. Her, she works with the owner of the Houston Astros and it was a Sox for an Astros game so she got she talked to the owner of the Astros um, Crane and he owns Crane Freight Crane Freight and they volunteered to send out the last of our boxes oh so oh, how, how for oh, that's great that's great so the Houston Fantastic. Astros had a hand in sending stuff from Tinley Park huh mm-hmm Wow, that's fantastic. What a neat coincidence of meeting someone like that and then having them help you out like that. Pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. Yeah, and you know, what, did, what other incredible things did you get from all this? What, what, uh, what kind of struck you as kind of neat from this whole experience? Um, really, it got me to appreciate what I have and what I can do to help other people, not just people I know, but people I don't even, even know over like there it was incredible to get all the support from the um families and prisoners and people who probably don't even know father chris mm. it was 
incredible when we got it all together and I'm really glad I could do it and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Wow. That's fantastic, especially at your age to even be willing to do that. And we give you a lot of credit for taking the time to do some. And I, I guess you brought some pictures about uh, Father Chris and some of the reaction of the troops over there. How did they react to your... You, um, I'm f quoting Father Chris, you have never seen someone so happy over a box of, de a box of name brand deodorant. Jeez. It was really, they were overjoyed at that. And it really made a difference over there from what I've heard. Wow. That makes it worthwhile. It's kind of neat that uh, makes you feel good about you did something that, that mm -hmm. people appreciated over there. Have you heard any back from Father Chris at all? Uh, do you keep in contact with him at all? Or? We've I've, we've been emailing back and forth mm -hmm. occasionally, okay. and I we received two postcards from him. Oh, wow. Okay. And he says everything's going fine, huh? We believe so. They are kind of unintelligible. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, let's talk a minute about your eagle. Now, the, to get an e be an eagle scout, what does that entail doing? What do you have to do to be an eagle scout? Um, be, practicing to, or training to become an eagle scout requires a lot of leadership training and preparations and how to be literate, how to be, how to talk. Okay. And also doing things, especially yes. the, uh, being involved with uh, taking leadership and getting things done and organizing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've shown a lot of that uh, so far. And you've got all these, these are your merit badges, right? Yep. You know, we say, how many have you got? Um, 33. 33. And you're going to get how many more to be an eagle? Five more. Five more. Wow. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when do you think you'll be an Eagle Scout? When when's your project? I'm hoping to be finished by next year. Next year. Just ab around this time next year. Okay. And that's kind of neat. I think a very small percentage get to be that rank. Mm -hmm. So that's a, quite an accomplishment to, to get that high. So that's fantastic. Keep up the good work doing that kind of stuff. Now you're over at Lincoln Way North. Uh, what are you involved in over there? I am involved on the in the ROTC class and the drill team. Oh, you're on the drill team. Yes. Now, what do they do? Um, it's training, training. It's leadership training. Okay. It's how to be, much like the Eagle Scout, how to be, how to, how to know how to know how to, um, sorry, know how to get people to listen. Not how to be forceful, but full, but, but how to get them interested and get them to listen. That's a good thing to know how to do. I've been trying to learn that for all these years, many years. I just thought one other thing. Where did you store all this stuff that you gathered? It was in our garage. Oh, jeez. In our front hallway. So we, you had to park your car outside of the garage a few times maybe? Or? Yes, a few yeah. times we had to. It was in the basement. Um, it was... Basement flooded. Oh, oh okay. It was in St. George uh, School. They allowed us to use one of their classrooms. And oh. Jacob had gone to St. George School. Wow. Okay. And then we also had some in my in-laws' basement too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're spread out. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of stuff and everything. Well, I, I wish you all the luck in the world. Do you think you might do some another big project sometime, or keep up with this at all? Or I think we might have to wait a little bit for all of our favors to come back, because oh. a, a lot <laughs> of it was from friends and family, and mm. yeah, you yeah. really. I would love to do another project like this. Okay. Well, I assume that you got a lot of support from your parishioners, your yes. friends, family, local businesses, the village. It's just fantastic how everything came together because you took it upon yourself to do it. So congratulations on a fantastic Eagle project. Thank you. And uh, quite a son you're raising there, too. So thanks for Very proud being of him. a good uh, father for a, a good uh, project there. Uh, fantastic. We saw a longtime resident who volunteered many, many years. And a nice young man here who is just starting out doing his volunteer efforts, uh, providing service to Tinley Park. So we hope you uh, get some in inspiration from this. And if anybody out there wants to keep up doing this, do it. Uh, don't forget Christmas uh, coming up, uh, the parade, uh, the tree lighting, and the market, December 6th through 8th. Santa's coming to Tinley. Thanks for watching and see you next month.